There's a lot more damage, and there's a chance that when he's out, he thinks he's home free. Astral Sphere hits him right in the back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome you to the Land of Dawn. It's a best of one. Full series, one to one now. Echo and homeboys who will stay in the upper and who will go down to the lower brackets. Echo, homeboys, spam in the chat as well. Who do you think? Who do you support between these two teams? Go and support your team. Hashtag HP winner. Hashtag Echo win. Early on, Sword and JP both doing the best they can at annoying the enemy junglers. But looking at, again, the drafts here for Echo. Still, man, that Yuzong and Arlet pick. Yeah. JP, all right, we'll be utilizing the Arlet as a roamer. Up against Zorn on the show. The two heroes that we mentioned on the draft as well. And then both boys now. Ooh. Oh, a flicker out. JP not going to be able to flicker out of that one. The mortal coil here used up by Chibi. One last hit, but JP gets out just mm -hmm. almost one last Kill one from Chibi, just a scissor, and take him down. Carl Tease with a good retreat to secure it. Zorn might follow next. Carl Tease just a short Ooh. way away from level four, but he doesn't even hey. need it. Just headbutt Zorn to another dimension. He whacks him into oblivion. Boink. And this is the problem, though, for Echo. If, the, if Chibi gets snowballing on this Martis, then it's a whole different story. Now they have damage, but they can't really take on the Martis before the Martis takes them out. So they have to be very careful overextending here. Lest they give Chibi that snowball that he so desperately requires whoa, 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 whoa. to carry his team. Look at that. Man. Dude, violence. <laughs> it almost seems like Chibi has already a Hunter Strike built in his kit earlier. But yes, we expect an action-packed game and we already got it, right? Two minutes almost. It's very action-packed. You can see here it's one to one. Both teams just looking for more skirmishes here. Not even in the turtle vicinity just yet. Not yet, but Chibi's already looking towards hills. He knows on the Martis up against the Akai, it's going to be a tough job for him 40. to go for the neutral objective. But 40 pops in the Black Dragon for him. Zorn jumps in forward, trying to buy some time right now. Sabat jumps in with the Raven Spider, and that's going to be a victory win from Chibi with a Mortal Coil. Carl Tizi as well, unable to find a pin down. Zorn gets out with one HP. And now it's Echo, who are oh. looking for scraps, looking for a kill, but it might be JP who falls here, and that's going to be the decimate. GB gets out with one HP, it's another stampede to bring Sanford back, but it's only just a disengaged tool for homeboys in the second minute of the game. Scrappy fights and Scrappy wins and L's. Homeboys, though, they got the better end of it, and oh, oh, oh. outside, Benny. Beauty. This is a very, very dangerous spot. The way the dragon, a big kick from Zorn. <laughs> and to add salt to the wound, it's some tas tas gaming from Mr. Tauntman himself. Add that kill to the drawing board, and homeboys, they are really stepping to the gas, oh. uh, in their gas here. That's, that's, this is the, the aggression that we have expected. But for Echo, that just did not go as planned. The heavy spin didn't come out fast enough. He gets crowd controlled, Cartesi unable to secure it, and Sanji just wasn't landing the Astral Spheres. They had all the tools, but if the first two games mean anything, then the guy, who, the, the team who gets the early advantage really starts getting traction at five to six minutes. Now, it's in the home boys. They're trying to make that happen. Final flash on the Zorn. The Shampoo gets him out just barely. Oh, one last hit. Benny Cutie gets a fadeaway. Chibi up top just punching on this turret goal. Sanji trying to zone homeboys away, and they have done that, only taking Zorn down. Okay, again, a very, a very fast-paced early tempo here. And we can see here, both teams now uh, out of breaths, seems like. Like they're just taking things down. Oh, I'm wrong. Top side action. Ooh. Go for more, the final slash, trying to bait out the final part of the mode on Coil, and that's the headbutt. Another goal for Benny Cutie on the Bruno. And some Bruno damage, and Chibi was not some ready BD. for it. No backup available there, too. A bit too over-aggressive. He is working against the clock. A lot of pressure is on him to really make this early game work for his team. That's not it. Now with the turtle up with Homeboys losing the initiative for now. We'll see if Echo can finally get some momentum going for them. Good delay. By oh, oh they the dragon. That's JP locked down. Bravest Fighter used up as well. JP with a brilliant flicker timing to get out of a sticky situation. Carl Tizi brought back to the team as the headbutt. Warlord walking them down again. JP recalling and homeboys should have a bit more pressure until JP comes back. Sanford 
Getting the stacks in. Zorn, no way of the dragon this time around. They need to try to bait out a heavy spin somehow, some way. If they want to pick it up, never mind. Uh -oh. Carl just jumps onto Warlord. He's still saving that Purify. Even another realm. That's the final slash. Coming back again. Black Dragon for him as well by Sanford to the back line. That's another realm. And my goodness, TV just doesn't miss. But Sanford doesn't miss either. It's a furious dive. Meanwhile, Zorn jumps in, gets away the dragon. Now chained down by Sanji and JP on the other side. It's Sanford versus the team. Decimate and a mortal coil. Not enough to take 40 down. JP, Ooh. though, with that conceal, was able to secure the kill. Oh, Zorn does hey, not hey. catch 40. Oof. Chaotic fights right here, but Sanji now with a lightning truncheon. That's a Ooh. huge power spike. You can see the damage coming through. It's rushed, by the way. He didn't build anything before that. He knows that his goal is to help with the pickoffs, help with the damage right here, not to, to provide utility. They already have the Arlet, the Yuzong, and the Akai. Utility is the last thing he needs. Going for the lightning truncheon right now. This means that homeboys, unless they're going to get some magical defense, they got to be a lot more careful in these fights. Take a look at the mid. There's a fine Warlord, gonna be taken down. Oh, a great save by Zorn, even a lockdown. With the wave of the dragon, Warlord actually oh. re-engages with the help of the Nether Realm, and now TV might get another kill. He does three kills. Super, super action heavy game. Very sharp as well. And you can see now, um, both teams just going at it. Five to four, six minutes in, six minutes in, and Home side though, um, homeboys managed to grab the first structure in the game here. So Echo, they're at a little disadvantage here. Long term wise, that's a good investment from homeboys. They will definitely limit their rotations. But let's see here, Echo, will they find a trade soon enough? 20 seconds. The turtle, last turtle will be up here. That's a lot of damage for Rashi. Yeah, that's the Novaria power spike. And for Echo, man, they just have to be a bit more coordinated. It looked so good earlier, but somehow, some way, Chibi is just able to secure all these neutral objectives. Echo has to find a way, maybe a different a force to the plan of homeboys before they go first. Warlord with a splash Ooh. of damage. Oh, now pinned down into the wall, not even let, not even given the chance to pop into another realm, and now Subpot is going in. On to Benicuti, dealing some damage. Benicuti with a Purify as well. The flicker Ooh. dodge away from it. Chibi still wins out the retreat battle. Even with the heavy spin. Echo, get a kill. But they lose out on the turtle now. And Sepat wants to go for more. That sword. Locking Sanford down. That's Ooh. the damage right now. And Sepat is going to be collapsed on by four members of Echo. So winning in the skirmish, but just losing in the neutral objective department. Zorn wants to go for a re-engage. Rizal, but hitting in the back. Sheriff Rizal's in town, Call Tizzy gets a good headbutt and the final slash takes him down. It's Sanju picks up the kill. Now the realm as Warlord has respawned back into the fight, but now is caught amongst two Ooh. members. That's a good spear and Warlord will fall to Carl Tizzy, the Dragon Warrior. Marching forward again, zoning Zorn and Chibi. Ooh. It's just recall. <laughs> It's just respawn, fight. Respawn, fight. Recall, fight. Man, that was the theme in the past few minutes. Now they finally are out of rev and they reset. Now let's see here. Homeboy, slight lead economy, but is that significant? I feel like here's the main problem. Raizo has zero kills, one death. He wasn't really participating for a long time in that fight. But on the other hand, Benny Cutie on the Bruno, he was so low for so long, yet he is willing to stay there and output damage. That's part of the reason why Echo were so successful in just grinding those kills down. Looking at the items though, with the Cast Claws Berserker's Fury, it's really on his power spike, but Rizal has burst damage to work with. Okay. Now homeboys, they are looking for more ground. They have uh, gained another turret here. Top and bot tier one taken out. Meanwhile, Echo, they have yet to claim a turret, but item check. Exactly. If you look at the fighters here, I think Sanford, his choice to go for the Hunter Strike is still very, very good. I don't think going full tank on the Yutsan will ever be good. But for JP, he has the Antique Cura, so he's weak to magic, but this physical damage, he can just heal it up like this. I actually looked instantly at the gold laners here. It's an endless battle and a BOD done for Rizal. Meanwhile, for Benicuti, only a few, a little bit ahead, just like by 100 gold. Already has the three item power spike as well. So both these gold laners should be online in the mid game. An Astral Echo to reveal three members of Homeboys in that mid lane. Still Sapat and Chibi staying hidden. Trying to use this position to get a good 
set up on the Lord. Rizal zoned away to the other side of the map completely. This might be an opening for Echo. Oof. Look at Danny just walking up. This man is fearless. Not here. Gotta be careful though. Sanji pops into Astro. Oof. Recall and instantly flickers out. Does some damage back to Warlord. Forces that regen on Warlord and GB to reset as well. Thank you for the patience from 40. He was in the mid bush for I think one and a half minutes. They're waiting for the right moment. But take a look at the spot here. The cure angle. Oh, with the flicker. Oh, what a cancel by Betty Cutie. Nice. They might have won them the fight. Now it's a black dragon phone to the back. Sapat joining in with the Raven Spider. Not enough damage. And that's Betty kiting him, outplaying him. Meanwhile, Sanford. Oh, wait, the dragon from Woo! Sword. Bringing Sanford back. That's a decimate for Call Teasy. Finds a good pin. The Nether Realm helping him survive for a little bit. As TV pops in Immortal Coil. Warlord loses the Nether Realm. He gets poked down. Both teams losing their XP laners. Zorn is just styling in the, uh, against Sanford, man. What the heck was that way of Dragon Play? Both teams now, they Ooh. lost a member, but okay, JP Final again. Slash. Moving. Quicker. Not enough for now. Zorn marching forward, jumps in with a Jinku. No way, the dragon! Oh. He finds Betty Cutie! Again. Again, it's Sheriff Rizal with a follow up and a double, but Zorn. Zorn, Zorn, the playmaker for homeboys. Chivalry Ooh. is not dead with a rise That's a here. gentleman. Zorn. Homeboys now claiming the team fight and also the Lord. Can Echo bounce back from this? I think they definitely can. It's still as close as ever. But we have to see what can homeboys do with the Lord. They lost a tower on the bot side because Echo unintentionally set it up when the wave bounced off their tower. And now with... When they're trying to recover like this, they have to wait, man. Especially when Benny Cutie does not have to purify. There's just too much danger. And I think Echo right now need to consider you saving some of the card control to ensure that Benny Cutie gets the protection he needs because he is just all the way in the front line. Gotta be careful here. The orange buff actually taken by Chibi with a retribution. So it's not just the turtle contest, even the buff contest. It's been Chibi who's winning it against the GOAT. And it is... Very close here. Take a look at the total kills here. 10 to 9. Sure, 4,000 already established here. But according to Rashi, Echo Seal has a lot of opportunities to bounce back. Let's see. Good poke down onto Rizal. Homeboys aren't really going to be able to utilize Ooh. this first Lord. Kaltese is actually walking up. Trying to give some damage and maybe an initiation. Warlord, that might have been a mistake there with the Shadow Stampede. He's saving another round right now. Oh! oh! He doesn't even pop it, he gets slain before that even happens. Now Sipon in the back, trying to deal some damage, trying to sustain from Benny Cutie's damage. Does a lot in the back, Benny Cutie still kiting. Sipon against Benny Cutie, still kited away. Sanji picks up the kill with an astral media, buys him with the nature as well. Ooh. Good immobilization from Rizal, it's called Easy pops in. The heavy spin, but Sheriff Rizal just guns him down. Looking for more on the map. That's a concealed play, Zorn jumping in, a final slash from JP, but Sanford again as well. Just like Carl Teasy falls to the gun of Rizal. This is not looking good for Echo. That was a good recovery here from uh, um, Homeboys. It looked somehow awkward in the early fights, but they recovered and Rizal claimed yet another double here. He's just doing a lot of damage, especially in this point of the game. The fact that his damage comes out a lot quicker than Benny Cutie, and the fact that he has a lot more options to self-heal, self self-protect, and maintain distance. I think that's the main advantage he has right here. So for Echo, earlier, once they kind of sort of got a small win in that fight, the fact that they kept going to try and get some more, that was very, very greedy. Looking at the damage dealt right here, though Sanji is matching the damage output, and he is not as ahead as Warlord, but he is getting up there. He just finished the Holy Crystal, and with that wave here, there's a chance that Echo can just stall oh. his game as long as possible. Okay, here, um... Again, as we expected, an action-packed game. And we got it, right? Just, just what we want. And we can see here, the Lord now enhance a, a crucial war, uh, Lord, especially if you're Echo here, who is uh, at a disadvantage. Continue the setup. KP. Oh, take a look at Zorn there. Setting up from the far, far bottom bush. That's super ambitious by Zorn. Let's see if he can mount 
An actual crazy flank on the Benny Cutie. Remember, Benny has the Purify, so Homeboys has to somehow, some way, look for a way to bait Trigger. that out. Or maybe, maybe it's Zorn's task to give Suppat the opportunity to look for that stun and then engage. The Astral Echo reveals two with only Warlord and Suppat, who is revealed. Carl Tizi taking control of the bush. Chibi still holding on to the Lord, now resetting it. As Ryzel is still in a bad spot for the team to look for a team fight. However, for Echo right here, the top side of the map, I think it's actually no, it's actually pushing towards them. So homeboys now, they're the ones who have the time, all the time in the world to just wait it out. Look at the wave. It's pushing up ever so slightly, but it's gonna keep building up to a point where Echo can't ignore it. And with the Lord turns to half HP, this oh. might be the make or break moment. Oh, they spotted Zorn, but Zorn spotted them as well. Four members in the bottom side of the map. Carl TZ now gonna be engaged on. Oh, by the likes of the team, and even Zorn right now jumps into the back. It's with Subpot, but with the nature saves Benny Cutie's life just for a win. Final slash, saving him. Way the dragon connecting now to Rexy Battle. Who's gonna win it? Still TV against all odds. Homeboys once again win out in the Retri Battle. A good Astral Sphere to take Ryza low. But it's not enough. It's a jungler for an XP laner traded in for homeboys. Sephat's sacrifice was not for nothing. He managed to just, again, distract, bought enough time in that bottom side of the map. And Carl Teasy, of course, alone, isolated in the front, looking for that contest. And homeboys, they managed to find Carl and the Lord. Let's see here. It's a 4v4 offense and defense. The wave isn't that good for homeboys to look for it but it's still a good charge with an enhanced Ooh. lord Ryzel now joining in the team gets a good shot to take that turret down dodging away from the astral sphere as well homeboys decide to disengage so holding on to that 5.5k gold lead all right homeboys taking it slow they are already satisfied seems like with the taking one base here in the top side but they might siege at the bottom side you know they will cry the jungles instead and let Echo regroup and recalibrate here. Well, without the actual Lord, I think it's a bit too dangerous. Even then, the whole idea is that Homeboys is using the Lord to push a sense of urgency. Because in a proper, normal 5v5 back and forth maneuver, I do think that, like game number two, Echo on the Bruno has a lot more chances to make something happen. The problem is, during that moment, the critical moment where they need to be next to the Lord, Sapat is just a big problem here. Going with all the physical defense he can get. Get on armor, blade armor, as well as the dominance eyes. He is just hellbent on making sure that he stays in the front and he zones everybody away. Hmm. It's just a waiting game, game again. Echo, they need to be careful on not overextending themselves here. It's very important because it's a minute left to the next Lord. And of course, the next Lord will be an evolved Lord, ladies and gentlemen. So. Keep that in mind. Meanwhile, homeboys, likewise, they do not want to overextend themselves. And Zorn Meanwhile, here Zorn. needs to be careful. He has Zorn here. Ooh. Has the immortality, though, though. So he can, again, just showboat in front of the Echo members, but needs to stay calculated. Both. It's not just Zorn. It's Zorn and Chibi <laughs> for recalling and feeling the confidence here in the 18th minute of the game. Arashi, that goal difference says quite a bit the clint has actually gone a significant lead from the last time we saw it it was actually quite even now it's a 1500 gold difference well, it's always a lot easier when you don't have to be all the way up close and personal and there's no one there's no crazy bravest fighters running at you trying to get you out of the fight benny cutie now finishing the c halberd here 12 percentage hp damage i don't know if it necessarily means he can take down support faster though with the Lord in contest yet again, now it's back to the same situation. Can Echo try and do something crazy? Just subvert the expectations of homeboys, or is it gonna be the same setup? Wait for the Lord to get low, wait for the waves to push, and then use the path to zone everybody away. Another far setup here, peculiar angle perhaps is what Zorn is looking for, but now he shows here, I believe. Oh! <laughs> Take a look at the snipe there. Good pre uh, position by Sanjay. Final Slash dodged away from as well. Warlord needs to recall. I don't think he can regen from that. A lot of damage. And I guess that's what Echo have been waiting for. For Sanji to finally hit this ultimate power spike in the later stage of the game where he can actually start to almost one-shot people. 
And 20 minute mark. We have hit it officially, ladies and gentlemen, in this game. 3 0. He committed the oh. Dragon. They're trying to collapse with Carl TZ. Knows better than to use the heavy spin, but Black Dragon 4 is going to be used up. Jay Pay! Finds a massive final slash on the rise zone. Now it's going to be Petrify and the Furious Dive. A full collapse and a pin down from Carl TZ. He didn't get the retry, but he got Rizal and TB on the wall. Now it's Betty Cutie. Oh. Still surviving! Betty Cutie! Survives. It's the Echo Express, the house of highlights that wins them the team fight. What the heck happened? Echo with the angles finding the right plays, and you can see one, two, three members taken wow. out. Thankfully, though, Ferramis has the passive, but this is just a free lord for Echo. Is this the turnaround? That was the what moment they've been waiting for. The catch on the Rizal to follow up from Sanford in a split second decision. That yeah, is so good and Carl Tizi tries to get some more. But with the Lord right here, now the turntables. With all the siege power, with the rage that Sanji can bring on this Novaria. It's going to be a tough defense for homeboys. But they have the option of using the Nether Realm as a last ditch all in against the Lord push. I am concerned with the wave clear that Homeboys has in their composition. Um, this is Echo in full offense. Well, not full because a lot of fouls from their side is actually on cooldown. So let's see here again. Echo, will they be able to pull off this comeback? It's an evolved Lord that's marching in the bottom lane. They won't use two waves, just one. Charging into the base. Now final side, who gets to pop back, but he still is able to dash out for now. Warlord. Find a zone, but he gets zoned instead by the worldy of Benny Cutie. The Evolve Lord pulled back. GB still has the immortality attacking. That's gonna be a dive from Sanford onto the back. Rizal using him with the nature, still kiting back. Not enough. He buys the immortality, he buys some time, and now called TZ is the one with his immortality pop. He's gonna be taken down, and it's another outplay this time from homeboys. GB marching forward, slip out with the Bravest Fighter, Sanford with the oh, Greatest oh. out the start. Oh, it's a final slash! They're gonna back. That was Benny free hitting. Sabai gets the stun down, and Benny Cutie picks up a killing spree. It's one to one. Homeboys, Ooh. they overextend a bit, and you can see Echo is ready to punish. This potentially might be the final push. Don't think it is going to be the final push just yet. They are lacking a few members, no Lord to push down as well, but they might be able to crack all three base turrets. A beautiful Astral Echo That's revealing dumb, yeah. three. Warlord walking forward, getting a Ghost Burster. Thou Sword! Oh! Oh! Two! Two massive outplays. One from Sanji, the other from Sanford with that Black Dragon form to cancel out that Way of the Dragon. And just like that, both teams disengage. <laughs> 22 minutes in. What oh. a game! Six minutes ago, it was Echo. Just losing two turrets left standing, but now 23rd minutes. Of it's official. Structure-wise, homeboys, they're behind. And now it's an even game, Arashi. Well, technically, it's not quite even. The Lord is on the top side, and the middle and bottom side of homeboys has no base turrets. Now Echo can play the long game. They can poke down the members of homeboys before going for a big fight. Oh. They're going in onto Zorn, not too sure oh, about this. Zorn, oh, beautiful shampoo. The dodge away from the final slash, but he's still going to be followed in, stopped all the way to the back. Sapat trying to retaliate, jumps in with the Bravest Fighter, but Betty Cutie just pops that with a nature and deals more damage. TB pinned down to the wall, oh. and shut down. Zorn able to find one, but Sanford, it's just him with a mortality. Look at the Astro Meteor from Sanjay! And that's an Astro Echo. That is Warlord with no Nether Realm against all odds. Echo against the TP recalls. They have turned the game around. Two to one, knocking homeboys to the lower brackets.